Get ready to set foot on a mysterious and dangerous island, either on your own or with up to eight players in co-op. You'll need to gather resources, find food and fresh water, craft weapons and gear, build a base, and defend it from the island's terrifying cannibals in this sequel to End Night Games The Forest. Hello guys, and welcome to my channel. Here is the review of the most anticipated survival game, Sons of the Forest. So let's see how this game fares in comparison to its excellent predecessor. End Night Games' new venture is essentially The Forest 2 and expands on just about everything its forerunner gave us, in narrative terms, the size of its world, and the myriad weapons, tools and gadgets that we'll need to survive on a cannibal-ridden island. Let's begin with what Son of Forest offers in story. The Forest sits among some of the best survival games we've ever played, and Sons of Forest starts from one of the endings of The Forest. The Forest featured two endings, and Sons of the Forest effectively makes the first canon, where an older Timmy is seen struggling to suppress his mutation and investigating an island labeled, Site 2. That's where the Sons of the Forest story unfolds, you're sent to the remote island to locate a missing billionaire, and quickly find yourself trapped in a cannibal-infested nightmare. Like The Forest before it, this sequel focuses on visual storytelling more so than scripted encounters or lengthy cutscenes, with the core focus being on survival against the horrors of the island. One of the major concerns for survival gamers is the size of the map. If playing area is small a survival game soon becomes boring and frustrating. Exploring new areas and encountering new threats and winning over them are key features of a survival game. So let's see how big is Son of the Forest. The Sons of the Forest map is roughly four times the size of the playable space seen in the forest. The area is loosely based on the Site 2 map you may have glimpsed at the end of the first game, although it has been subsequently expanded as End Night makes it a reality. This survival game is once again set in a Pacific Northwest style environment, although Sons of the Forest features dynamic seasons to help introduce more variety. This not only impacts the visual design of the island, but your approach to survival, food sources will be different between summer and winter, for example, while the elements themselves will alter the behaviors of enemies and present further challenges. So, we have a bigger area to explore but what will we do to survive in this bigger and badder forest? Here comes the key attraction of the game that is its gameplay. The Sons of the Forest gameplay is built on the foundations that helped set the forest up for success. It's an open-world survival game where you're empowered to use the weapons, tools, and environments around you to fight back cannibal mutants and mitigate the effects of the elements. You can dare to venture solo or in cooperative multiplayer sessions of eight player groups like its predecessor. Much like The Forest, this sequel focuses heavily on crafting, cooking, and combat, the latter of which has been massively expanded to encompass more weapon types. Guns are more prevalent, although ammunition is limited, so Sons of the Forest have a melee focus. Given that Endpoint has also massively expanded the size and variety of the mutants here, having a shotgun on hand to help you out of a sticky situation is never a bad thing. One of the more significant changes between the Forest and Sons of the Forest is a new AI system which developer Endnight has dubbed, BAIL, a tool which governs the behavior of those who inhabit the island. Characters are impacted by hunger, thirst, and their mental state, which can alter their routines and reactions to events. Enemies also have their own ecosystems, with your actions helping to influence whether mutants are more likely to stick to the network of underground caves or roam the wilds above. The cannibals are more vicious and they are able to find expansive ways to coordinate their attacks. The enemy eye is much more improved as you can even use fear as a weapon against them if you're smart with your resources. There are also Sons of the Forest companions that you can get to help you out by issuing commands. These AI helpers can gather resources and do other time-consuming jobs, which will help you out a lot in your survival efforts. Sons of the Forest have more robust cooking, crafting, and building systems. End Knight has introduced a digging mechanic, and the ability to use a 3D printer to create more elaborate and complex items, be it to help aid your survival, or to create different colored objects to help you stand out from your friends in multiplayer sessions. The sanity system has been dropped which is a good step as it doesn't fit in the core survival loop. Building is still a core focus in Sons of the Forest, and you should expect a more grounded series of systems to help further immerse you in the world. For example, if you want to add a window to the base you're building, just pull out your axe and chop in the space for one, spears are created by sharpening wood, and campfires are created by snapping twigs and lighting them. Sons of the Forest is still a survival horror game at heart, so managing your resources and conditions will still be key, even as more challenging crafting systems are implemented. 
The only confirmed release platform for Sons of the Forest is PC, and it sounds like the developers at End Night are solely focused on PC development for the time being. With that said, ports for Sons of the Forest on PS4, PS5 and Xbox might arrive in the future. Thank you for watching and if you like this video please subscribe to my channel.